Hello and welcome to our next YouTube tutorial. In this video we're going to be building a responsive gallery using CSS Grid. Nowadays it's really popular and I'm sure you have already come across such galleries on modern websites. So as you can see we have here 12 images with little gaps and those images are aligned in two dimensional space. So that's it what you can achieve using CSS Grid. It's a two dimensional CSS layout module. As we said, the gallery is responsive. If we make browser smaller, then images will shrink nicely and the gallery itself won't break. Alright, let's go ahead and start building this project. I have here in VS Code a couple of files. I mean index.html and style.css. And also I've got a folder called images, which includes all the images that we're going to use throughout this project. You can download starter source files from the link in the description. Actually, as a quick note here, I want to say that we're going to build this project in Mozilla Firefox because this browser has a little bit better working environment for CSS Grid. So that's why I have run the project in this browser. Alright, so in index.html file, I have prepared a basic HTML structure. As you see in the head element, we have a link for our CSS file. So let's go ahead and start building our gallery. First of all, I'm going to create HTML markup. So let's open development. It should be a wrapper for the entire gallery. So let's assign to it class container. Then I'm going to open another development, which will wrap all the images. Let's assign to it class gallery. So now it's time to insert here images. Let's open IMG element and indicate the path of image we have folder images and then we have to select img1.jpg also we need to assign a couple of classes to the image element first one is going to be for common styling right img as for the second one it should be for individual styles so write img-1 all right, so as we said, overall we are going to have 12 images. So I'm going to duplicate this line of code 11 times. And then quickly change names of images and also class names. All right. So, as you can see, we have here all the images, but for now they are quite big and also they are looking ugly because we have here just pure HTML. So it's time to start styling. For that, let's go to style.css file. First of all, I'm going to create some reset styles. Let's set the margin and padding for all elements as zero. And besides that, I'm going to set box sizing as border box. After that, I'm going to take care of the container. So let's go ahead and select it. Then define width and height. Let's set width as 100%. As for height, I'm going to set it as 100% of viewport. All right, that's it for now regarding container. I'm going to select a gallery which wraps all the images. So the gallery is going to be a grid container. As for images, we will make them as grid items. So in order to make the element grid container, we have to assign to it display grid. Now we have to define grid columns and grid rows. In order to do that, we have to use properties called grid template columns and grid template rows. So let's start from the columns. Use here property grid template columns. Actually, as a quick note here, I want to say that if you're not quite confident in CSS Grid, then I recommend to check out our CSS Bootcamp, in which we explain this module in details, and also we build the entire project based on CSS Grid. So if you're interested, then you can find the link of this course in the description. Alright, so we're going to have 8 similar columns, they will have the same size, and for that I want to use a function called repeat. Repeat function takes two arguments. As a first one, we have to indicate number of columns, 8. As for the second one, we have to indicate size for each column. 
In this case, I'm going to use a function called minmax. It allows us to define the minimum and maximum values of each column. So as a minimum value, let's pass here 10 pixels. As for maximum value, I'm going to use a special unit called fractional unit, write 1fr. So it means that available space will be divided into 8 event parts and each column will take up one part of available space. So as you can see, images have changed the layout. We have here kind of messy situation. Let's inspect the page and open developer tools. I said at the beginning of this tutorial that Firefox has a really good working environment for CSS Grid. On the right hand side we have here the Layout tab in which you can find a section for the grid where we have our div element which is Gallery. If we check this box then Grid Layout will be displayed. I mean you can find here 8 columns which we have just created and the proper grid line numbers. Okay. Next I'm going to take care of grid rows, for that I'm going to use a property called grid template rows. So we will have 4 rows, each of them will have the same size, therefore I'm going to use again repeat function. Let's indicate here a number of rows, 4. As for size, I'm going to use here little trick, which will help us to make the gallery response. So I'm going to make the size of each row 10% of the width of the viewport. It means that once the width of the page will be decreased, then the size of rows will be decreased accordingly. And eventually we will get a responsive layout. In order to see better, let's go to the browser. So if I make the browser smaller, then the size of the rows will be decreased. Alright, so for now images are quite big. And in order to fix that, let's go ahead and select images with common class name IMG and then set width and height as 100%. So now images are placed inside grid cells, also they are smaller, but we have here a slight problem. If you take a closer look at them, you will find that images are a little bit stretched and they don't look quite nice. So in order to fix that, let's use property called object fit and assign to it value cover. So now they look better. Next I want to create some space between grid cells. For that we have to assign to the gallery grid gap. Let's set it as 16 pixels. And also let's change background color. I'm going to use here color 0, D, 4, to zero D. So as you can see we have some space between grid cells and also background is changed. Alright, now we need to align each image individually and eventually they will take up the entire gallery. So let's start from the first image. I want it to take up the first two columns and first row. So let's select it with individual class name IMG1. Then define property called grid column. This property allows us to define the starting column line number and also the ending one. So as we said, the first image will take up the first two columns and first row. Therefore, we need here as a starting line number one, then slash and three. And also let's write grid row with line numbers 1 and 2. So as you can see the first image has taken up first two columns and it's placed in the first row. Second image will take up the next three columns and the first two rows. So let's go ahead, copy the code for the first image, then change the class name and also values for grid column and grid row. We need 3 and 6. As for grid row, write 1 and 3. Alright, next we have the third image. I want to leave it where it is. I mean it will take up only that one cell. So for the third image, we need grid column as 6 
and 7 and grid row as 1 and 2. Next one will take up 2 columns and 2 rows. So for the fourth image, let's write grid lines. For grid column we need 7 and 9. And for grid row, 1 and 3. Alright, next we have image number 5. I wanted to take up 2 columns and 2 rows as well. I mean 2nd and 3rd rows. So for the 5th image, let's change grid lines in the following way. We need here 1 and 3. As for grid row, write 2 and 4. Okay, actually that's the way how I decided to align images, but of course you can do it on your own. You can use more images or less and create the layout as you wish. I know that writing code for the gallery is kind of repetitive and maybe a little bit boring, but that's the way how it works. Eventually we will get a really nice result. Alright, next we have image number 6. I want it to be placed inside 3rd and 4th columns. As for row, it will take up the third one. So for the sixth image, let's write line numbers for grid column as 3 and 5. As for grid row, we need 3 and 4. Alright, so we have aligned six images. There are still left other six images. As we said, writing the code for such layout is kind of routine, so I will pass here the code for the rest of the images, and then you can simply overwrite it. Okay, I hope you wrote the code for the other six images. Let's go to the browser and see how our gallery looks. So images are aligned nicely and our gallery is already looking good. All right. Actually, I want to make here some changes. As you see, we have a gap between images and I want to create such space on the edges of the gallery as well. I mean on all four sides, top, bottom, left and right. For that, I'm going to use padding. Let's write here 16 pixels. Next thing that I want to do is to place the entire gallery vertically in the center. For that I'm going to use Flexbox, let's assign to the container Display Flex and in order to center Flex items, vertically we need Align Items, Center. So the gallery is centered and the last thing that I want to do is to create Hover Effect. By default I want to decrease opacity for images and then we will increase it on Hover. So let's assign to image opacity 0.7, then select image with hover and increase opacity right here 1. And lastly, let's use transition with values opacity and 0.5 seconds. Alright, so as you can see, we have here nice hover effect. And actually, our project is done. If we make the browser smaller, then you will find that the gallery is responsive on all different screen sizes. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned about lots of interesting and useful stuff. If you liked the video, then please subscribe to our channel, thumbs up, comment below and click the bell in order to get notified about every newly uploaded video. Thanks for watching, see you in the next tutorial.